All right, if you guys haven't seen this video yet, I've got a doozy for you. It's a doozy. <laughs> this is a this is a prophetess, quote unquote, called Juanita Bynum, right? And she's doing what these false prophets all do in recent times: tithe hustling, offering hustling. These are these these are hustlers, man. You see those people that do credit card fraud and spam calls trying to dupe you these are the same people but the thing is they're just trying to dupe you trying to cheat you all in the name of jesus there's nothing christian about modern day christianity well i would say a good 80 percent of the bishops and the pastors and the men of god nowadays do not follow the scriptures they do not I was born in a Christian family where I don't really practice Christianity anymore because of things like this. These are tithe hustlers. In the Bible, when the Lord said, bring your tithe and let's keep it in the storehouse. It wasn't talking about money. It wasn't talking about currency. It was talking about your wheat, your grain, your beans or whatever, your yams, your rice, your food. Because famine is coming. The period of hunger is coming. We have the period of plenty right now. It's going to be followed by a period of hunger. So bring your offering. Bring your tithe. You bring your grain, your food. Let's keep it in the storehouse for the famine period. So the poor wouldn't starve. So we can feed the people when it's time for famine. When famine season comes. I wasn't talking about money. The idea of tithe and offerings being money and material things is a modern day concept. It's nothing to do with the scriptures. These are criminals. I'm going to play the video so you see what she's talking about. She's offering prayers for money in exchange for money. Give me money and I'll bless you. There's nothing Christian about this. Look at this. Solomon said, when I got through sowing my 1,000 burnt offerings, the Spirit of the Lord asked me, what do you want me to do for you? We got to get on that side of it. Not the side where we always asking God. But we got to get on the side where God asks us. And that's another level of sacrifice. There's 21 people in this building that God said we'll give a thousand dollars. But I'm going to give you this handkerchief out of my prayer room. And if your breakthrough don't come, you can call me. Even financial advisors will not guarantee you profit. She's just a pie in the sky guaranteeing people something. Like man is going to fall from heaven. I'm going to give him a handkerchief if you give me $1,000. There's no power in the handkerchief. There's no power in all this crap. The power is in the belief. Just believe in yourself. You can believe in a greater being, in a powerful being, but not these people. These people are using the vulnerability of poor folks that are looking for a greater power for help. They're just using you. Give me a thousand dollars? What? In this modern, in this economy? Because I know what I'm talking about. He said there has to be a divine. You don't know what you're talking about. Of course, if you really know what you're talking about, you would know what you're doing right now is an abomination. Not just the whole solar sitting for money thing. Her being adorned in jewelry and weave and makeup, long eyelashes, it's an abomination against the scriptures. The scriptures is against women adorning themselves in material things, clad in their natural beauty. It says you're mocking God. You're mocking your creator if you do that. That's what you're doing right now. You're not, you're not following the scriptures. You're just a false just a thief. A woman should not be on a pulpit preaching the gospel according to the Bible, according to your religion. Go into your scriptures. How come I am just a layman? I know this. But you, supposedly a prophetess, don't, she, they know this. But they don't care. They don't follow the scriptures. They're just criminals. <laughs> they're just criminals. That's what they're doing. Deceiving people. I'm going to show you that part of the scriptures as we go. So you can see. I'm not just talking out my ass. I'm shifting this building this year. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking gobbledygook. There has to be a divine shift. You're the next generation. You're the next church. Please. 
please don't scare me. This is what the church is going to look like 10 years from now. Ain't going to be no church 10 years from now. Don't scare me. Not like this anyways. Go home People are waking up. On a fast. You go home and you get in prayer. You go back to your room and stop all this foolishness. You go back and get in the presence of God. And say, Lord, you dropped the mantle in this building today. You're calling me to carry a torch to the next generation. Don't let me be one that fumbled the ball. Kuriandere de Bohusha. He said, 21 people in this building, come now wherever you are. Give me an envelope. Give me some envelopes. He said, 21 people, come now wherever you are. He talking to you in this building. A thousand dollars ain't nothing. A thousand. The audacity of this woman. A thousand dollars ain't nothing. Man, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere, a thousand dollars ain't nothing. Are you serious right now? Dollars ain't nothing in comparison to what God's gonna do. I didn't call for buckets yet, y'all. It ain't nothing. Your God ain't gonna do nothing because your God does not exist. I don't know whatever it is you're preaching, you're praying to, but that's not the God of the scriptures. There's plans that you have. That ain't going through until you make that sacrifice to the Lord. Stand right here, young man. There's business plans that y'all got. It ain't going through until you make that sacrifice to God. And those men going out there for her to pray for them, for her to lay her hands, for her to exert authority over them, are committing abomination. According to the scriptures. They're insulting God. <laughs> I'll show you. There's promotions that you want. You're not going to get it until you make that sacrifice to God. Line up right here. I know what I'm talking about. She doesn't. I know what I'm talking about. She's a criminal. Line up right here. I know what I'm talking about. The Lord said you better come. I'm just a messenger. He said there's 21 of you all sitting here. You put everything else on your credit card. I don't care what vending machine you told you was coming back. What vending table? You Not today. She's literally saying, go in debt to give me this money. Put it on your credit card. Wow. Wow. How far have we fallen as a people, especially black people? There's pastors that don't, God want to open doors for you. He don't want you to rent. He wants you to own your own building. But you got to make that sacrifice. Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? Older and younger. There's doors that you won't open. There's some people sitting in this church that's been praying for things for your church. You're the one that's called to make this sacrifice for your church. Come now. I know you're in here because the prophecy don't lie. The spirit of the Lord don't lie. The spirit of the Lord don't lie. No prophets nowadays. Ain't no prophets nowadays. Anyone that comes to you and says a prophet hearing from God is talking donkey, donkey balls. After the time of John the Revelator, no more prophets. He was the last. That was it. According to the scriptures, these people are talking horse crap. This is not real. What she's doing, she's just playing a game on you. The spirit of the Lord don't lie. He's not a lying spirit. He said 21 people in here. If God wasn't talking, nobody would have moved. He said 21 people in this building. That's what he means. He said 21 people in this building. How do I know God is talking to me? Because you got it. That's how I know God is talking to you. Because it's in your account right now. Because it's on your credit card right now. That's how I know God is talking to you. Well, I ain't never gave that before. You know what? In order to get something you ain't never had, you got to do something you ain't never did. Who is God preaching to? Who is God preaching to? Well, how do I know God is talking to me? How do I know God is talking to me, Dr. Bynum? Because the devil should be talking to you too. The devil should be telling you why you shouldn't do it. The devil should be giving you excuses as to why you shouldn't give that kind of money. But the devil will never give you that excuse when it's time for a down payment for a car. He don't never give you that excuse when it's time for you to put a down payment on a house. He only does it when it's time for you to get a breakthrough for your life. My God, I called and you answered. I'm the messenger. I'm the messenger. I'm the messenger. No, you're not. I need some offered envelopes. Do you have any? I'm the messenger. You're not. 
Now this, I'm going to play another video, right? <clears throat> you see this stuff going on right, right here is nothing compared to what's going on in Africa. In Africa, oh my Lord. I don't know whether the IQ is too low or maybe it's the poverty. I do not know. But when it comes, we're, we're very spiritual people. And these criminals know that black people are very, very spiritual. And since the time of the colonial masters, uh, the local deities and the local religion and spirituality of the land have been destroyed. And this new religion have been imposed on the people. It's the only way they can express their spirituality. So these criminals go there. In, they, they, they're, like, they're like a virus. They're everywhere in Africa. Every corner you look, in Nigeria, there's a church. Everywhere there's a church. <laughs> Every corner there's a church. Because offering money, tithe money. I'm going to play another video right now. It's a multi-billion dollar. Dollar. He's worth billions of dollars, this pastor. Right? And he's asking his congregation to give him one million dollars <laughs> and people blindly will do it people they will, they will do it because they, they they desperate for like for for supreme governance they're desperate for for for, for law from above for god to do something in their lives and they will do it because they see these people as a representation of God on earth. They call them men of God, women of God. A bunch of other women of God walking around with jewelries and long eyelashes, long hair, bleaching their skin because they're trying to look fair and want to look more European and whatever. You're, you're, you're insulting God. <laughs> and your judgment will be swift according to the scriptures. Not me. I didn't say this. Watch this pastor, man, this bishop. Who oh, by the grace of God can give one billion naira? Who oh, by the grace of God can give one billion naira? He's asking for one billion naira. One billion Nigerian naira is equivalent to about 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. That, what? That's life changing. It's not even life changing money. $50,000 is life changing money for some people. Let alone 1 million, 1.3 million, 1.2 million. Are you joking right now? And people will give him. Because we're desperate as a people. We are at the bottom of the totem pole. We're, 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 our race is at the very bottom. Very, very bottom. Instead of us to look inwards. Because we're the only ones that can help ourselves. But these demons, these criminals will tell you. Oh no, leave it in God's hands. No, even God in the scriptures says that he's given us everything we need to rescue ourselves from whatever situation we find ourselves, physically or financially. But these people will tell you, the, the power, you don't have the power. You have to believe in them and then they'll talk, they'll, they'll talk to God to intercede on your behalf. <laughs> So the other man there is interpreting in the local language to the local people that don't understand English. Look, this nigga is asking for one billion naira. Such people should please see my secretary in the office tonight for a very special announcement. If you can give a million, I don't know if he's asking for a million each. I wouldn't put it past him because this guy is a billionaire in dollars. So saying, give a million dollars and come and see my secretary for a special prayer. And we're going to lay hands on you for a special announcement. Oh, your breakthrough is coming. Your breakthrough is coming. Speaking the gobby the gook in tongues. This donkey shite. And then there'll be some of you who can say, Daddy, I wish I can give a billion, but... All I can afford is a hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys can hear, or maybe the audio is not very clear. What he's saying now is, there might be some people that a million dollars might be too much for you. Well, you can give, if you can give only a hundred thousand dollars, well, come and give only a hundred thousand dollars. Only. 
Listen. And then there will be some of you who can say, Daddy, I wish I can give a billion, but all I can afford is a hundred million. Some people should also see my secretary after the program tonight. <laughs> so he's literally saying, a million dollars is what I want, but if you can only afford a hundred thousand dollars, well, I'll accept that too. Just relo I'll reluctantly take the word. The Lord will reluctantly take that as well. So just come over and we'll pray for you as well. But yo, remember, your prayer is not going to be as dope as the person that gives a million. Yo, you just have the budget. You, your prayer is going to be on sale. That, that'll be the budget prayer. The prayer we're going to give to the person that donated a million dollars is going to be the full price prayer. You're just going to get the half price, man. The promo price. <laughs> this nigga is crazy. And I swear to you, people are falling for this. They wouldn't be in business if people weren't falling for this. I say people are waking up to the crap now, but not fast enough. That's why videos like this is necessary. I wouldn't make videos like this if my people wasn't being duped and humiliated by these criminals. Modern day Christianity, there's nothing Christian about it. Even the way they dress. You remember when they were twerking? In church, they're still twerking in church till today. Women from the club last night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, they haven't even changed the clothes they wore from the club last night. They're in the church the next day twerking. They wasted all their youth going around effing up. Now they're trying to find a husband to go to the church all day. But they can't help the, 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 the ratchet whole ways. They still got the whole ways in them. They hear the bass and they start shaking their ass in church. I'm not making this up. I'll play the video for you. Watch. Thank you. you thought I was making it up? You thought I was making it up, right? Look. That's church. I just took the song out for copyright reasons, but that's that's church. That's the church, y'all. That's the church. <laughs> We're in trouble. We are in trouble as a people. We're in trouble. The black church is a disgrace right now. Let's go to the scriptures. First Timothy chapter 2, 11 and 12. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjections. Let her be quiet. Because I suffer not a woman to teach, not to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. And if she has anything to learn or ask about, she should ask her husband. This is not me talking. This is what the scripture says. Don't be a half in, half out Christian. If you're going to be a true believer, go the whole way. I'm not saying I'm a true believer like that because I don't really practice that like that no more. But I'm just showing you what your religion says. This woman went in the binoms over there laying hands on men, having men on their knees in front of her and she's praying for them. That's an abomination, according to the scriptures. Not me. Not me. 1 Corinthians 11. R read it down. I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding to the traditions just as I pass them on to you. They're not holding to the traditions. They're just making it up as they go because of money, 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 money. I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Listen, every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dis dishonors God, dishonors his head, which is God, which is Christ. Every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head which is the man in other words she's dishonoring god because it is the same as having her head shaved so as a woman you shouldn't even be walking around with a bald fade according to your script according to the bible this is not me i'm just telling you what the bible says what the scripture says 
if you're going to walk in the pulpits and say you're a, a woman of God, a prophetess or whatever, I'm just telling you what your scripture says. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut. But if it is a disgrace for a woman to have a hair cut off or a hair shaved, then she should cover her head. According to 1 Corinthians. A man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of the man. Boop, boop. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. I don't know what we're talking about there. Neither, <laughs> neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. It is for this reason that a man ought to have authority over his own head because of the angels. This is not me. I didn't say this. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor is a man independent of woman. Team. Team. Man and woman are supposed to be a team. Not now they have everyone fighting over nonsense. Pitting us all against each other. Here's another one. First Peter 3. Wives, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husband, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words, but the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornments, such as elaborate hairstyles, weave, all this nonsense, wig and all that nonsense. It should not, it don't, do not adorn yourself in all that. According to the, the, this is the word of God, right? You believe in the scripture, right? This is what God's saying. Such as wearing jewelries of gold and fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self. Even the Bible is telling you that the true beauty comes from within. Not all this excessive makeup, long nails, bleaching of your skin. And on top of all that, you still go on the pulpits to preach? Wow. You want to know how ancient Christians used to dress? How Christians are supposed to dress? Right? This. This is how Christians. <laughs> this is how Christians dress. Should dress. Like the Muslims with the hijab and covering up. No, I'm not saying the burqa like dress like a beekeeper. No, that would be going too far. I'm talking about like decent. Like this. If you're going to practice the religion, practice it right. Like this. Like this right here. Like this. These are Christians. These are Christians. These are practicing Christians that are following the faith. How they should. This is how you should dress as a woman of the cloth. As a Christian woman. <sighs> <sighs> We're in trouble. 